Hi, I'm Mike Bellevue, and today I'm down in the shop, and we're going to be making linen cartridges for the 1859 Sharps Infantry Rifle and Carbine. Now, <clears throat> these are the actual historically correct type of cartridges that the Sharps would have used, and I get asked a lot of questions lately about the flat base, and what people want to know is, <clears throat> Why do they have a flat base? Uh, they thought that, <clears throat> excuse me, they thought that Sharps cartridges had a folded base and the back of the breech block cut that off to expose the powder. And doesn't this stop the, um, the flame of the cap from getting to the powder? And, and in fact, the earliest Sharps cartridges were the folded type that the back of the breech block did cut off. But when they did the cavalry trials for the Sharps carbine, they found that at longer ranges, two and 300 yards, it was not shooting consistently. And what they determined was that people put those, those tailed cartridges in differently each time. So they were shearing off different amounts of powder when they cut the back of the cartridge off. And, and of course, the different amount of powder made it shoot somewhat inconsistently. So the Sharps folks developed this flat base cartridge. Much like a modern cartridge, it loads flush with the end of the chamber. And the backing paper, in this case is tissue paper, uh, back in the 19th century, I've read that they used currency paper. Uh, but at any rate, you want a really thin paper, and the flame does propagate through it. Okay, so we have two types of bullets that we can load, and I'm going to demonstrate loading on this type, which is the, the Richmond Labs uh, bullet from Eras Gone Bullet Molds. It's a heel-based design. So the linen on the cartridge is going to come up to this line right here. Now the other one I have is a Larry Flea's Ringtail um, bullet, also by Eras Gone Bullet Molds. And with the cardboard tubes, it attaches right on this ring, or you can tie the ring to paper. But what I'm going to do with this one is I'm going to put the ring right over this, I'm going to put the paper right over this driving band. Uh, the important thing there is you've got to measure your chamber length to where the end of the paper is going to be on the bullet. That's it. So, that said, I'm going to show you how to make these. It's exactly the same as making paper cartridges. Exactly. So, should you watch my video on making paper cartridges, and I'll put a link down below in the description area, uh, it's exactly the same as that, except with linen. And there's only one additional thing you have to do with the linen. Well, some people are going to tell you that the linen material for a linen cartridge has to be nitrated. That's not true. But it does have to be sized. And, and what sizing does is basically it coats it with a starch and stiffens it. It gives it more body. So this is the linen I'm using unsized. And you can't form a cartridge out of this because it has no body. It would just flop over. Um, you couldn't put powder in it or you'd have a great deal of difficulty. And I don't think you could ever get a bullet in it because it would just scrunch up when you try to push it in. So this <clears throat> is what that same fabric is like when it's sized. So it stiffens it up considerably and it allows you to be able to actually form a cartridge out of it. Now, a lot of people don't understand what sizing means, and really it just means applying a starch to the cloth. The way I do it <clears throat> is I use wallpaper sizing. And I brush it on and then just hang it up outside to, until it dries and you get this. Now, Brett Gibbons at uh, papercartridges.com, he tells me that he uses spray-on starch, like you'd use for ironing, and that that works just fine. So, there's a number of alternatives for doing that, but you're going to have to size it. Here's a trick that I'm going to show you, because I think it'll save you the angst I went through. I wish I'd just done this at the beginning. I have glued a bullet onto a half-inch dowel. And I'm just going to chamber it like it was a cartridge, which I did. All right? Then I took a uh, pen and I marked the edge of the chamber. 
right? Then I measured this with a set of calipers. All right, so in the example here, I'm using the Fleas Improved Ringtail Bullet, but it'll work with the Richmond Labs Bullet or any other bullet that works for sharps that you want to use. Just glue the base to that dowel and then measure from the line you drew that represents the end of the chamber to wherever the linen is going to end on the bullet, right? So if it's a Richmond bullet, you've got that heel that you got to cover up. And if it is the, uh, the ringtail bullet, you're going to go up to the top driving band. So just measure that with a set of calipers, and that should be the height of the linen that you can transfer to your template. And then it's just a matter of wrapping it around with about a quarter of an inch overlap. Uh, get that measure, and that's the width of your template, and you're good to go. Well, the tool kit that you need for making these cartridges consists of just a couple of half-inch dowels. So this one we're going to use to form the actual shells uh, of the cartridge. And I take a half-inch dowel. There's two ways of doing this. One, you can take a larger diameter dowel, and if you have a wood lathe, you can turn it down to the size you need. Or you can take a half inch dowel and I size it up with aluminized tape. Okay, but basically it's a pretty simple thing. You just take the bullet you're working with and with some calipers measure the diameter where the paper's going to go. All right, pretty simple. And then you just build up your rod until you get the same size. And then you stop. And then you can make your shells. The other tool is the base former. And that's just a half inch dowel. And I just ran it around sandpaper gently to take any burrs off up there. And we're going to form our bases. Pretty, pretty simple, pretty easy. The bases are going to be formed using a one and a half inch paper punch. So. I'm using tissue paper, the kind you wrap presents with. I'm just going to pop some in here. Hold it over good. Pop it in. And now we've got a bunch of bases. Right. So that's pretty simple. As I said before, we cut our shells out of starch linen using our pattern. And we're just going to make a tube with these. And it's going to be very straightforward. Let's get the bases out of the way. All right, so I'm going to take my former. I'm going to take just a glue stick. You can use Elmer's glue. You can use a lot of things. They all work. Okay, I'm just going to put a piece of cardboard down here so I'm not gluing everything to my workbench all the time. All right, I'm just going to glue, put a line of glue down about a quarter inch on the edge, edge of the linen. Okay, now I'm just going to wrap it as tightly as I can. Nice and tight. Okay. Now just hold it down for a few seconds for the glue to set. And I'll put it aside and let it dry. And we'll just do as many of those as we want. All right, once we've got the, uh, the tubes glued up, we can put the bases in. And this is my base tool. Right, and all I'm going to do is I'm going to take one of these one and a half inch tissue paper circles. And I kind of center it on here, and then just kind of fold everything down. Right, 
make a nice flat base. Doesn't have to be perfect. Then I'm going to insert it into one of these tubes we just made. And when I'm about a half inch or so from the end, I'm going to put the glue in. And I prefer to use Elmer's glue for this rather than the stick glue. I could have coated the base with stick glue, but it makes it difficult to put in. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to just paint, paint the edge with a little bit of Elmer's glue. And then on a flat surface, I'm just going to put the base in, okay? And then I'll pull a dowel out, and I'll set that down to dry. And we'll just do as many of those as we need. After they're done, I let them cure up for about a day, and then we can fill them up. <clears throat> well, I let uh, our tubes cure up all night, the bases, so they're good and solid now. And, and, you know, before we had talked about sizing, right? Because they're sized, they just stand right up straight. I can squeeze them and they don't collapse. And I'm going to be able to, to pour powder and put a bullet in them. That's what we're going to do now. We're going to add the powder. So I'm using the 65 grain service charge. And I'm using Swiss 2F. And I'll just pour that in each one. I've got the 65 grain service charger powder in it. And you can see I've got a lot of room left. These Petrosoles have a much larger chamber than the originals did. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some cream of wheat. And I am going to put a 0.7 cc scoop in each one of these. And that'll give me the depth I need to seat the bullet in it. Now, if you have a different brand of sharps than the Petersoli, you'll need to experiment. You may be able to get 65 grains in and no airspace at all. And that's what I'm trying for, no airspace between the, um, the base of the bullet and the top of the, of the load column. So, you know, you're gonna have to experiment around you may need more or less cream of wheat, or you may need no cream of wheat. Or you can certainly just fill the whole thing up with powder, but it's going to be about an 85 grain powder charge. It's going to, it's going to rock your world. So I'll just finish filling these up, and then we can seat bullets. Now it's time to put the bullets on. I am using the Eras Gone Richmond Laboratories Sharps Bullet, 54 caliber bullet. You can also use the Richmond Laboratory, or excuse me, the Eras Gone Bullet Mold Company's uh, Fleas Ringtail Bullet. Uh, but if you do, you're going to need to make a longer cartridge. You're going to need to make up a separate template for this. And if you use the, um, the Fleas cartridge, because it doesn't have a real heel base, I put the, the linen right up to the top of the bottom driving band. That's what I glue it to. And, and that seems to work just fine. Now, of course, I'm about to load these up, you know, full powder the whole bit because I've loaded a number of these and I know this is going to work. But if this is the first time that you're doing this, what I recommend is that you make up a dummy cartridge, just one, and don't bother putting powder in it. I would just fill it completely up with cornmeal. And then try that in your chamber to make sure it fits, that it's not too deep, that it doesn't stick out. You can raise and lower the breech block. Um, and, you know, if it's like a 64th or so deeper, that's fine. Uh, once you've checked that, the next thing that I would do is I would take that cartridge and I would lube the bullet which basically you just dip it in liquid lube. And I use a mixture of 60% uh, lamb's tallow, 
well, actually two-thirds lamb's hallow and one-third beeswax. And I just heat that up in the microwave in a coffee cup, and I just dip the cartridge right in upside down, put it down on a piece of aluminum foil, let it dry. Then try that, because the lube can make a little bit of a difference as to how deep it goes. So if it's sticking out and you can't close the breech block, you want to know that. So if at any time in that process your dummy round sticks out so far that you can't close the breech block without uh, ripping the paper off or doing something bad, then you just want to take your template and you want to take off that tiny amount that you have to, well, probably will be tiny, to make it work. And then I would make another dummy and try that. And once that's working, then you can load up a bunch of live rounds. And that template that you've made will be good till the end of time, right? So that's, that's kind of the trick of it. But I know that these fit. In fact, I've, I've already shot a bunch of these, and I love them. So let's, let's put some bullets on. We'll go back to the glue stick. All I'm going to do is I'm going to run that heel base around the glue stick. Right. And I'm going to take a uh, cartridge with the powder in it, and I am going to stick it in. And just kind of hold it for a little while until that glue gets a good grab on it. And uh, then, voila, you've got a linen cartridge. So I'll just do the rest of these, and then we will be set. So once again, I let these dry for 24 hours, let, let the glue really cure up, and I get a good grip on the bullet. And then we can lube them. And uh, like I said, I just dip them in my black powder lube in a coffee cup that I've heated up in a microwave. Uh, and this is what they look like. Now, I've been asked by a lot of people, is that really enough lube? And the answer is, yeah, it sure seems to be. Um, earlier this week, I shot 40 of these. No wiping at all, no cleaning until after I was all done. And they all shot just fine. They all shot accurately. The barrel cleaned up easily. So, yeah, we seem to be getting enough lube on there. But that's it. So this is a completed Sharps linen bullet or linen cartridge. And the only thing left to do now is take them to the range, make sure they work. And that's just what I did. I headed down to the West Shore Sportsman's Association with my 1859 Sharps and a batch of paper cartridges. And here's what I did. And my mission today is to function test these linen cartridges that we made up. Uh, I don't really care about accuracy. Today I just want to make sure that they chamber and fire. So that's what we'll be doing. Okay, let's function test these linen cartridges. Okay, I don't know how well you can see this, but I just picked this up smoldering out in the grass. I was setting the range on fire. This is the remains of the linen cartridge wrapper uh, from those linen cartridges. So they're not all burning up inside the chamber. A lot of it is blowing straight out the barrel. I was kind of curious as to what was burning and what was blowing up. and. Um, and it looks like the stuff is blowing right out. So there was more of it than this, but that's what I retrieved. Okay, two linen and three Han cartridges on steel. You got them. So what's my verdict on the linen cartridges? I like them. If you can make paper cartridges, you can make these. The steps are exactly the same and the tools are exactly the same. The only thing you have to do differently is you have to size the cloth before you start working with it. That's it. Once you've done that, it's exactly like making paper cartridges. So it's not hard. 
Uh, it's certainly not as easy as using the Charlie hand tubes, but it's not hard at all. And you end up with a cartridge that looks good, it's historically correct, and it's a lot more robust for handling than the paper cartridges are. So all that is good. Now, now I only took... Sound of freedom, right? So I only took them out to the range today to function test them, but I was kind of having fun. So I ended up shooting 20 of them, I guess. And they all work just fine. And I rank steel consistently with them. So, you know, they're not a bad choice performance-wise either. So, my verdict overall is no reason not to make them. If you can make a paper one, you can make a linen one. So why not make the real thing? Anyway, until next week, bye.